So uh, I'd like to have the panelists introduce themselves, but keep it to uh, 30 seconds to a minute on the intro and try and answer the question with the rest of your three to five minutes. Um, first focus we're going to talk about is on measurement, and I guess there's two general sort of philosophies on sample versus very quantitative approach to measurement. Um, but uh, Michael, maybe you could start us off and talk about you're in Nielsen, but what's old about Nielsen, what's new about Nielsen, and what kind of work are you doing on measurement? Sure. Uh, so I work in actually in a road little custom group of research out based in Los Angeles. And um, what we do is we, we use primary data, um, and we try to get a 360-degree view of consumers. Uh, and we fuse our primary research to all this measurement data. Nielsen has all these, um, you know, it's primarily a measurement company. So we, we do a lot of ethnography studies, video cams in people's homes, uh, taking mobile devices and tracking the media consumption throughout the day, uh, advertising exposure. We've done a number of, we have a neuroscience lab in Berkeley where we subject people to uh, these, just to ad effectiveness and how they're viewing content, pair that up with eye tracking, it makes for some pretty, pretty interesting um, Research, but um, we also have buzz metrics on the me measurement side and Nielsen Online, which do some of the social media stuff as well. Um, but basically, I mean, our big deal is just trying to paint this 360 degree picture from you know uh, the your, the market you have, the customers you have, trying to segment them into different people and, and just to really learn more about these people by following them on the web, engaging them on the web in their communities. And um, yeah, I think that's it. Okay, and Jim, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your background. You've been in the industry for quite some time, and maybe what's your kind of progression been as a person in marketing using not very many tools, maybe first, or mostly market research, and now to maybe more online tools? Oh, thanks, Dave. Yeah, I'm Jim Schreer. I uh, run my own consulting business to help marketers figure out how to spend their money smart these days. Uh, do that based on being a former chief marketing officer for a motor company worldwide, executive VP of sales and marketing. Chrysler and an executive VP of sales marketing for our John Visco. So spend a few bucks on TV in my day would be a short summary of that. Uh, the interest in the measurement battle here between uh, Nielsen and Network Insights uh, is, uh, I think, an earthquake uh, that's happened in the world of marketing. Because we have an economy out there from the entertainment business to the sports world, to how much the Brian James gets paid, how much Mike Woods gets paid. It's fundamentally based on the ratings of 30 second television commercials and how media companies are making the money. Um, a thesis could be put forward that says that that system is now based on a house of cards because the actionability of the Nielsen ratings by the consumer is very low. What's the source for that? Well, on the Super Bowl, the number one rated commercial was Hewlett Packard. The Nielsen rating was 99 million people. That's a lot. A lot of people that saw that that, that that commercial was exposed to. The problem is, in your world now, the world of social media, on the web, what are people talking about? They didn't talk about you look back. Didn't say anything about it. So they got the money, they got the three million bucks, but I don't think you look back, got much out of it. The social media buzz on the internet for Coke, for Audi, for Toyota actually went down after those commercials were exposed. I bet you if we went around the room today and told you that none of you can remember what those commercials are. So Nielsen <laughs> says those were exposed. Jim says, nice that they're exposed, but if people aren't talking about it, it's not working in the world of marketing with what, they're what they're talking about that matters. The marketer that won on the Super Bowl was Pella Florida because the next week, the number of interactions on the web for Teleflora went up 1,400%, 14 times. So they got actual money back for their three million bucks. But Coke didn't and Budweiser didn't. So, now, that's the thesis. And if you can track, which is the great new thing about this new tool that Dan's come up with, you can track whether it is positive or negative or neutral, which you also can't do with the Nielsen rate. So I submit to you, today starts a new day. It's like Tom Peters used to say, all you have to do is change your concept of the world, it's so simple. I'm here to challenge the economy that's based on the TV rating system, which is based on exposures, versus going out and measuring what people are actually talking about and what they're interacting, both positive and negative, 
on the web because I think it's the best proxy for word of mouth that exists. And according to Nielsen, we'll compliment to Nielsen. They'll tell you that 70% of effective market is word of mouth based on all the studies. The thesis would be, is social media and the buzz of social media a good proxy for word of mouth or not? If so, it should go way up in the way that marketers allocate money and they should have less emphasis on the normal TV ratings and how we allocate money. That's the thesis that we're looking for. Okay, so definitely a lot of commentary coming from the audience. I'll try and filter uh, some of that if I can. Please use again tag metrics if you want to ask a question or make a comment. So one of the larger themes here, I think, is around quantitative assessment. Well, not just sample being quantitative assessment, but also uh, the sentiment analysis, which I think Dan's going to jump into here in just a second. Could I ask another quick survey? How many people spend money on television advertising in the room? Radio? Uh, print? Online? Okay, now again, from online, how about online banner? And, uh, sorry, the banner and brand, whatever it means. Uh, performance online? Yeah, CPC or, or yeah. okay, am I got any categories here? Uh, well, yeah, sorry, search hasn't been on. All right, great. Uh, Dan, you're uh, the king of sentiment analysis here. Take it away. What's the What's the brand benefits that you're going to get out of doing a sentiment focus analysis versus doing a quantitative uh, focus analysis? So, quantitative, there's some, some questions from the audience. I mean, knowing whether they're good or bad, right? These are these impressions, right? Knowing whether they're good or bad comments, ultimately, that's what will guide you in a set of decisions. If there are negative, if you're Jim Beam and there's negative conversations going on about Jack Daniels, go and advertise the heck out of that, right? Go find those places because that's the reality of where you should be doing it. Versus trying to trying to pick them off in some of the markets that they you know, that they're doing really well in. Uh, sentiment analysis, the secret to it, certainly in social media, is how do we go after it and understand the world? And just one from the, a jogging standpoint. So people use a set of phrases that are really difficult to understand. Sometimes positive, sometimes it's negative, but in the, in real language. But how do we go to the next level, which is then in foreign languages? Because reality, if, if you're a company like Dell, right, you're thinking about the top ten languages around the world and. If we just use straight um, translation like a Google Translator, we're going to be wrong most of the time. So you have to figure out how you actually take a look at those things from a good and bad, how you think about it from a language standpoint. Because I, if, I'm, if, if I'm in another country, I want to be communicated with in my language. I don't want to be communicated to in your language. Um, and so how do, we do, how do we do some of those things? <coughs> Excuse me. So getting to that um, from a, a true understanding of the good and bad, right? So it's not just about amount of impressions or amount of interactions. The other comment, which I don't know whether it came out here, when we think about interactions, we can't just think about post content, right? A very small portion of what happens in social media today and what happens on the web today is posted. I think the study that came out said that about 10% of people are actually uh, are posting in some fashion on the web today. When we look at it at Network Insights, we see it about 15%. So there's a lot of companies out there, there's, you know, like Nielsen Buzz Metrics, they do, a, they do a great job of tracking the written word, right? Tracking the posted word. The reality is, what about that other 85%? The other 85%, which is the reading, the rating, the sharing, linking, inviting, I don't know, they good or bad reads, rates, shares, links, invites, because they're ultimately going to a place where they may be having another conversation. They may have started at MySpace and may have gone somewhere else. The question I would like to, I'd like to ask a follow-up question today is, which was, <clears throat> he, he was asking who spends money, and we, we had a whole bunch of people put their hands up. Who, who here spends money that isn't at an agency? Smaller group, of, smaller group of people. And so I, I, I definitely think there is a an opportunity here. When I think about metrics, there are many metrics tools. And last night I was in a heated discussion with a big brand. <clears throat> and we were talking to them about the, their agency and going back and forth, and they, they believe that their agency hides behind the metrics that they have today because that, that's what they're used to using and that's what the market's accepted. And so I'm here to tell you that it's changed. It's fundamentally different. And the way that we have to understand it is understanding all of this interaction. Not just was the, was the negative or positive mentions of my brand. It's how are the interactions and let's understand the whole story. Then let's go into that to say, how do we actually place advertising spend? And it doesn't have to just affect advertising spend on the web. It can affect all kinds of things, like what type of events do we host? Where do we host them? And so those are, those are the things that we think about when it comes to um, sentiment.